Hello everybody, welcome back. Happy Sunday. So today we are going to be doing a cookbook tour. So I'm actually super sick right now. I don't know why my voice isn't cracking because I've had like the worst sore throat like all week. So I thought that I'd sit down and just like go through my cookbooks with you guys and like show you my favorite recipes and stuff like that. I actually shot this the other night at like one in the morning. So excuse like this shift in lighting that you're about to see. Also, um, just to update you guys, if you're wondering like what the heck is going on with the Harry Potter theme leak, um, a couple things happened that were like out of my control, so it's like delayed. I'm gonna do my best to try to like have it still happen in October. Some stuff kind of came up last minute and it was like completely out of my hands, so I'm so sorry about that, but I'm working to get it all sorted out, so hopefully we will still get a theme week and it'll just happen in like a couple weeks, so stay posted. But anyways, yeah, let's get into the cookbook tour and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. So, these are most of my cookbooks. When I'm filming my videos, actually, I'm sitting like in this general area, so this is what's behind me. And I've also aligned them by color, and I actually removed all of the, uh, the outside, what's it called, like the paper, just to make it look a lot cleaner. Then I moved into a new place, and the sun actually faded everything, because this is a west-facing window that's facing it, so darn. But we're just going to go with it. It's too late to fix it now. So, starting at the red end. Ugh. Alright, so first we have Nigella Christmas, and I am absolutely obsessed with Nigella Lawson. I like, I want to be a mix of her and Martha Stewart, if that makes sense. Um, I love her videos, and I feel like they're so cozy, you know, her videos, her like, her show, and they're so cozy, so um, I have a bunch of her cookbooks, and so obviously this is a Christmas themed one. Um, I don't, have I ever made anything from this? Um, I'm not sure, a lot of the cookbooks I have... Um, I bought during my like I need to collect cookbooks phase, but I haven't actually used them for actual cooking. Pumpkin and goat's cheese lasagna. Oh my god. I think it would be fun to make some recipes from these. I don't know what kind of copyright issues I'm going to get into if I do that, but... Oh, these are so cute! Look at that! Um, it's like how to ice your Christmas cake. And look at like the different techniques, you, just, you could just like put like, I think it's fondant that she uses to look like a mountain or put like little snowflakes like fondant on top of fondant, that's so cute, oh my gosh. That's so pretty too, you can hear, I hope that's in focus. Next, it's called French Feast by Stéphane Reynaud. I actually haven't used this, I've barely flipped through it. I'm not a huge meat eater just because I don't know how to cook it so I don't make it and then it's just like a cycle that keeps happening. Um, but the photography, the photography in this book is absolutely gorgeous. If you're a meat eater, I totally recommend picking this up because there's just like, there's 299 recipes currently. There's so many. And I mean like look at that. What even is this? Foie gras poached with baby vegetables. Okay, that's more intimidating than I thought it was. I thought that was like chicken soup. But, um, like look how beautiful everything looks. A lot, like the titles are in French and in English, which I think is really cute because I think he's from France. Photo. Ooh, look at that. I honestly feel like this kind of cookbook could be almost like a coffee table book. Um, just because the photography is so beautiful and like it makes you so hungry. Oh my god. No, mommy. Like, look at that. Oh my gosh. How good does this look? So next is Marion. And so she is, I don't know, she didn't win, but she was one of the contestants on MasterChef Australia, I think the third season. Um, she was one of my favorites, and I like love that she came up with a cookbook, so I had to buy it. Um, MasterChef Australia was one of my favorite shows for the longest time, um, and everything is like hot pink accent, which like I love her. It's like I, oh my god, it's so good. Um, and so I think she is mixed. I think she's half Thai or completely Thai. I can't completely remember, but she's amazing at cooking, and like look at the photography. It's gorgeous. Um, and I'm gonna link all these books in the description box below if you want to pick them up for yourself. Um, they're so pretty. All of these. I'm huge. Um, I'm really big on getting cookbooks that have photos in them because before I started YouTube, like, look at this. She, like, drew around the photos. Like, how pretty is that? It's, like, sketches among the food. Oh, taking that photo and, like, trying to allow for the space to do that would be a nightmare. But it looks pretty, so good job her. Anyway, I'm someone who loves having photos of the recipes. I don't like cookbooks that don't show photos because before I started YouTube, um, when I just cooked for fun, <laughs> not I cooked because I slave for work, I used to like make it my goal to be able to get as close to the photo as possible. So that's why I like knowing what I'm supposed to be aiming for. Next is a Jamie Oliver's comfort food. So 
My mom actually treated me to a book signing with Jamie Oliver in Toronto when he was in Toronto. It was at Bar Buka, if any of you guys are familiar with it. Food is amazing there. Um, and so I got to meet him. I'll insert a photo here of us together. Oh my god. Um, we, we spoke Japanese a little bit together, which was awesome. And I didn't like pitch my YouTube channel because I just like, it was just not the appropriate time. I don't like being that person. But he signed it and I can't read what he wrote. So if any of you guys can like decode what this says, please tell me. I have no idea. Um, to Kayla something. Jamie. <laughs> like, what does it say? What does it say? It's been years and I don't know. Um, but I love the look of his book. I haven't actually cooked anything from it, but obviously it's all based on comfort food. And um, I have made some of his recipes in the past not from this book, and obviously they're solid. I mean, like, obviously, like, that's why he is who he is because he's so good. The perfect chips, pork buns, divine dosa. I don't know what a dosa is. Oh my god. Oh. Look at how good that looks, you guys. Oh my god. And so next is a book called Butter Baked Goods. And this is actually a cookbook from a store in Vancouver. I used to live in Vancouver. I did my undergraduate at UBC. Um, and Butter is a little bakery there. And um, her Instagram account is gorgeous. Go check it out. I'll have the handle on the screen. Um, so pretty. And uh, the cupcakes taste really, really good. I had one with, I think, like, cream cheese chocolate buttercream. I, like, remember the flavor still. It's so rich and so good. And there's, ooh, ginger cookies. Oh, my God. Yum. Uh, yeah, like, they're they're very, very good at what they do. So if you guys are in Vancouver, do I remember where they are? I do not. But I will link their shop below if you guys are ever in Vancouver and want to check them out. They are awesome. The only pumpkin pie chocolate espresso pecan pie, chocolate chip walnut pie, sour cream rhubarb pie, lemon meringue tart, butter tarts, red velvet cupcakes, peanut butter and jelly cupcakes. That's interesting. Yeah, and then I have another one of her cookbooks um, down the line, but we'll get there in a minute. Oh, my leg's asleep. <gasps> it's ripped! No! Actually, side note, I bought these pajama pants in Australia, too, from a store called Peter Alexander, where they have, like, the cutest pajamas. I think they ship internationally, um, so go check it out. Their stuff is so cute. It's a little pricey, but, like, these have lasted me, like, oh my god, like, five years? <gasps> five years? No. I think four or five years, so there you go. You get what you pay for. Okay, so this is my MasterChef Australia... Volume 2, I guess, was that my favorite season then? I think so. Okay, so then Marion must have been in season 2 then. So Marion, for this cookbook, she was probably in season 2. Because I wanted to buy the cookbook from my favorite season because George Columbaris, he, oh, I said his name wrong, I know, George Columbaris, whatever. Um, he is an Australian chef, and he was like one of the main hosts of the show. He made this carrot cake. Here we go. And it was a challenge in the show, and it looked so good, and it had like a million different ingredients. Um, and I wanted to try and make it at home, but like this doesn't have the kind of ingredients that like they had in the challenge. So I don't know if they like added special ingredients for the challenge where they had to like guess all the ingredients in the cake, because like there were olives in the cake, and like there aren't olives in this recipe. So I don't know, but the carrot cake looked good, and apparently it's his mom's recipe. So I wanted to buy the book. Oof. and um, try it out, which I haven't done yet, but one day, one day. We have my first Korean cookbook, which was a haul or like a mission to find a good Korean cookbook. Now I have Mangchi's cookbook and that's like my like go-to for everything. I love Mangchi. I don't know her personally, but um, I love her. She's so cute. Uh, anyway, so this is before I knew who she was. Um, it's called Growing Up in a Korean Kitchen by... Why he su shin have been stalled. Okay. Um, yeah, so this just has like a bunch of basic Korean recipes. After going on and on about needing photos, this one doesn't have photos. But, what is, which one is bookmarked? Tapje, sweet potato noodles with meat and mixed vegetables. So good. This recipe, all of them taste very, very authentic from what I've made. I actually made, um, for my anniversary with my ex, I made him like a Korean like banquet of food. Took like two days to make. Um, but he and I love eating Korean food together, so that's what I did for him, and I used this cookbook. 
But yeah, they have like they have like kimchi recipes in here. Um, literally everything. Um, and they have like Korean pancakes in here that are like so good. So next is Nigella Feast because again I'm obsessed with Nigella Lawson. So I think I think this covers feasts for like every different occasion. I think it's broken up into holiday. Yeah, so there's like Easter and then just that Passover. I love that they did it that way. Um, I think it's super clever. Valentine's Day. Meatless feasts. So there you go for anybody who doesn't eat meat. Ooh, yellow split pea and frankfurter soup. That sounds like oddly delicious, like total comfort food. Breakfast, oh my god, there's a breakfast section. Breakfast is like my favorite food. Banana buttermilk pancakes, oh my god. Georgian stuffed chicken. Green beans, green beans and herb yogurt. Ooh, ultimate feast. Okay, what's here? Rosh Hashanah. Lamb shanks with fig and honey. Gefilte fish, gefilte fish, is that how, is that how you pronounce it? The illustrated cook, cook the illustrated cook's book of ingredients so oh my gosh like this is so cool so all it is is like photos of like every single ingredient ever and like descriptions of it it's so fun oh my god you guys like literally everything and yeah there's like a pork cooking chart and it has like every different cut description of the cut how to boil it how to fry it how to roast it and how to braise it how handy is this book oh my god so and like look at this how to prepare a chicken, how to, spat, how to do a spatchcock, how to stuff a whole breast, make poultry stock. These books, this and the next one I'm going to show you, are so good for beginners. Like, if you're just getting into cooking and, um, you know, like, how to cook chicken. God, that is so handy. Um, if you're just getting into cooking and you are, like, in the I want to learn everything stage, like, show me everything. Um, is it a phrase? No, it's not. Uh, this is awesome. Because it just covers everything. Boar. Like, who eats boar on a regular basis? Like, that would be so cool. I'm so curious what it tastes like. Um, gross. Did not know that was a chicken. Pigeon. Ooh, the pumpkins. Oh my gosh. So yeah, like, it's so good just, like, even for reference. Or, like, if you, um, pick something at the grocery store and you, like, don't know exactly what it is. I mean, like, obviously Google is, like, infinitely faster. But this is so much more fun just to like even flip through, like look at all the kinds of tomatoes. So um, the, the reason why I got this is because it looks similar to this book. So so this book is called The Kitchen Bible and this like more or less taught me how to cook, kind of. So it's a thousand family recipes from around the world. So this has every kind of basic recipe that you're looking for it has like how to roast meat and roasting poultry and temperature and refrigerator storage guide and like just um basic stuff so like if you got these two um like the ingredients guide and the kitchen bible like you're probably good to go in terms of like learning how to cook like the basic wise basics um so at the beginning of every like chapter or section they have just like photos of every recipe that they have um, and it tells you obviously like the page number and everything so it's like a photo table of contents the recipes are pretty easy and they break it down very easily for you ones that I've used can you see how like it's dirty <laughs> Two recipes in here here spinach and ricotta manicotti okay not cannelloni but like a similar thing um, I made this and it's so good if you guys want a recipe I can like make this on the channel my the channel this channel um, if you guys want to see it it's really easy and you make like the cream sauce and you make the tomato sauce so good so easy it like oh it's so good so maybe I should just like make it chocolate Bavarian creams I think I made those the page is dirty so I think I did really really good um, okay so vanilla cheesecake this recipe was the first cheesecake I ever made it's such a good recipe it is like a solid recipe I don't know why I haven't made it for the channel just yet um, and then there's like my notes can you see that at the bottom what did it say Completely crush graham crackers into crumbs. Oh my god, it's so stupid. De-lumping the cream cheese mixture by hand hurts. Use a good blender. Oh my god. How 
It's just, why didn't I know that? Okay, so see, we all learn. There's a learning curve for everybody. Now I'm like ashamed that I didn't know that. What? Did I really try to mix the cream cheese by hand? Girl. All right, well. <laughs> Can you see me? If you do that, I'm not judging you. I'm just judging myself. Next book is Baking with Julia. So if you watched my, I think, 50 Facts About Me video, I told you guys that I tried doing, like, the Julia Child, the Julia Child thing where, like, I make a recipe for... I make like all the recipes in her cookbook and I use the wrong book. This is the book I used. Um, it's a collaboration of like her and a bunch of other chefs. So yeah. Whoops. Um, but uh, funnily enough, this one doesn't have too many photos, but I made a bunch of things from here. Um, I made white bread and I made brown bread. Oh, I, I think one of them or both of them. I don't I didn't find like there was enough salt in them, so I wasn't a huge fan. Bagels. This is the base of my bagels recipe. This is where I get the base recipe from. I made her blueberry muffins that were very that were a little too sweet for me. I don't like sweet muffins, but if you do, the muffins in this book are pretty good. They're very delicate. Um, pecans, sticky buns. This is the base of the recipe for my, um, it'll be in the cards, the cinnamon bun cake. This is the one that I based the recipe off of. A little bit different, but effectively similar. Um, croissants. I always wanted to make croissants. Haven't yet, but... How do I say this? We may be flipping through something else in a couple months, and there's a croissant recipe in that. Just to give you guys a little hint. Chocolate ruffle cake. I made this for my mom's, I think, 50th birthday. It, oh my god. It took like a weekend. It was one of the first like big things I made. Chocolate ruffles are so hard to make, but um, I learned a lot that I learned so much. I learned to not over mix or over whip a cake because it flattens out super, super flat. Um, didn't know that until I made that, but that's how you learn. <laughs> it tasted good anyways. Um, I made Hungarian shortbread. So good. Like, it doesn't, like, it looks fine, but oh my god, you guys. Like, I had to give this away because I would have eaten the whole thing. Like, 100%. I would, like, shortbread is good, but this, this is, like, another level. Oh my gosh. If I'm going to make it, let me know and I'll do it. Raspberry fig crostata. I made this. This was fantastic. Um, the crust is like, I think there's sesame seeds in the crust, if I'm not mistaken. Very kind of like unique crust, but delicious. My dad is in the sweet tooth, and he just like took a slice of like literally like a quarter of the pie and just like casually walked out of the room, and my mom and I were like, what did he just do? Yes, torte milanese. So this, I probably pronounced it wrong. It's like a torte, it's like, it's like a torte milanese. Um, and it's layered, so it's savory. And it has like literally, it's just it's it's like a meal in a slice basically. I think there's like, I think there's tomato. I made this like like probably like, oh my god, in like 2008. Oh my god, like nine or ten years ago. So bear with me. I don't remember everything. Um, but there, like, there's spinach. There's cheese. Looks like there's ham. I, I think even bell pepper in it. So good. So good, and it's so satisfying to like layer everything and then slice it. So good, I should make this for YouTube. Um, pizza Restico, which is like a deep dish pizza, but it's like very like cheesy and creamy. So good as well. Next is Cook Italy. So I think this is like my favorite cookbook. I made a point of like picking it up after I broke up with my ex because it was at his place, and I'm like, give me back my book because <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I watched like this Italian cooking show, and um, I really wanted to find a cookbook that featured, like, it was just like a really good cookbook for Italian recipes, and I did a lot of research, and this is the one I found. The slip cover or something, I don't know if that's what it's called, has, like, pasta hanging down. It's really, really pretty, um, but I wanted it to be, like, chic, so I took everything off. Um, so, what did I bookmark? The photos are gorgeous. They all look super authentic, um, and I haven't actually made anything from here yet, but it's definitely, like, on the list. So here is spinach and ricotta rolls. That looks like so delicious. Look at that, like the process of like slicing it into a roll. That looks so good. Egg free pasta. Oh, that would be good for YouTube. The little pasta is all here. How to prepare a squid. Oh my God. I tried doing that in Japan once and I accidentally cut the ink sack and it got everywhere. Such a mess. Such a mess. Pigeon ragu. That's interesting. 
coffee panna cotta or Nutella calzone. That's so good. But here's all like the nice photos. Um, and they have a bunch of different like versions of minestrone soup, which I think is really cool. I think this, yeah. Look at that. How cool is that? So apparently there's like a winter minestrone and a summer one. Is there like spring and fall too? No. <laughs> but I didn't even know that like there were two. I thought there was just one. So like how cool is that? Uh, but yeah, and then there's pasta and then thin. They teach you how to like make spinach pasta and then how to make black pasta, which I think would be really, really cool for the channel. Um, and then I think they teach you like how to shape it as well, I think. Making ravioli, uh, pumpkin ravioli, and beet pasta, like pink pasta here. Can you see? So this cookbook, it was a gift from um, one of the guys I dated, actually my last boyfriend, the guy who um, I actually went to New York with, if you guys follow me on Snapchat like way back in 2015. His family loved to go on cruises, so he brought a cookbook back for me, and in it he wrote something cute, so I'll read it. Um, Dearest Kayla, it's not, as, it's not as hard as it looks. Knowing you, you'll probably make each recipe even more delicious. Enjoy, sweetheart, Michael. His name was Michael. The thing that was cute about him was that I was always very 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 sure how important I was to him and like how much he cared about me and that was a very nice feeling because I hadn't felt that in a long time um, so it was nice I mean like it, it shouldn't be a novelty but it's like nice to be with somebody who you like know cares about you and like you don't even like have to question it it's just like I know where I stand with him which was nice so this um, is a bunch of recipes I think that were from the cruise line that they were on so yeah, I think it's a bunch of like savory and sweet beet salad with orange dressing. Um, strawberry Romanoff. Next book is 12,167 cooking, Kitchen and Cooking Secrets. It's getting late. It's like 2 a.m. So I'm sure I'll start slurring my words as the hours go on. <laughs> this is super handy. Um, honestly, it like it has like tips and hacks for like literally every ingredient. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun to read. What I want to do, I never think of it when I'm at the point of filming and editing, but I feel like having little facts like from here pop up throughout the video would be so cool and so handy and like put me like a leg above some other cooking videos or something like that or just like just enhance my videos, but I never think to do it. So like. I, I really should because some of the stuff is like really really handy. Let's give you guys a tip. Baked cookie tips. To freeze baked cookies, pile them in single layers between wax paper or parchment. Wrap them well. Put them in a hard container so they don't break. Don't freeze iced or decorated cookies. Decorate them after they thaw. I didn't know that. Frosted cake tips. Freeze cake, frosting, and filling separately. Frost the cake after it's thawed and ready to serve. For freezing, stick to uncooked frosting, such as mock buttercream made with butter and confectioner's sugar, which you can thaw and whip. That's like the kind that I make. Um, if you want to freeze a frosted cake, say someone brought it, freeze it solid on a baking sheet, then cover the frosted surfaces with wax paper and wrap it tightly. Unwrap it before thawing at room temperature. Like, how handy is that? Oh my god. So, you know what I mean? Like, my, my videos could be so much more, in, like, informative. Pasta. I now defunct online world directory of pasta shapes listed more than 800 names. Oh my god. Three ways to add moisture for fluffier popcorn. Soak kernels in water for 5 to 10 minutes. Drain just before popping. Sprinkle warm water on the kernels an hour before popping. Use 2 tablespoons of water per 1 cup kernels. Put 1 cup popcorn in an airtight plastic storage tub. Stir in 1 tablespoon water, cover, and refrigerate it overnight before popping. Interesting! Ooh, to reheat popcorn, put it in a large microwave safe bowl, cover it with a damp paper towel, and microwave on high for one minute. Who reheats popcorn? Is that a thing? Am I missing out? I don't know. Comment below if you reheat popcorn. That is interesting. Alright, so. There we go. If you want the facts included in the videos, let me know. I think this is just like, oh, it's such a wasted opportunity. I want to do it.
Next, so this is the second video, second video, <laughs> I'm so tired. I am so tired, you guys, oh my god. Oh, I'm filming the intro tomorrow, but like, I look like hell, that's why my face isn't in it. <laughs> it's 2 a.m., okay. So, this is, um, side out, happy Thanksgiving to all you Canadians out there. I hope you're having a good Thanksgiving. Um, I'm at my cottage currently as you're watching this video. Anyway. Um, so this is the second cookbook from the Butter Baked Goods cookbook that I showed you a minute ago. So this is called Butter Celebrates, and I think it's just like recipes for special occasions. Again, I haven't had the chance to make any of these recipes, but hopefully one day I will. So, oh, like a gender reveal cake. That's really cute. Um, little meringue booties. Oh my gosh, how cute are those? Like, I kind of want to steal that recipe. Animal cookies. Ooh, button sandwich cookies. How cute. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Falling leaves spice cookies. Look at those. How pretty. So, we're almost done, and my throat feels so raw. Oh my god. But we're going to power through. We're powering through. Okay. So, again, going back to how I messed up the Julia Child challenge kind of thing. This is the set of cookbooks that I should have been using. So, Mastering the Art of French Cooking 1 and 2, I think. Yeah, Volume 2 and Volume 1. Um, I kind of want to do it. Do you want me to, like, document it? Am I copying the girl who did it? Would that be copying her? Or would that be fun because um, I could, like, film it and make it, like, a series that I keep doing until I, like, die or something like that because like oh my god all these things um like how cool would this be so it's mostly savory so I know a lot of you guys actually requested some sa some savory foods so like what if I did it what would that be fun would you want me to just like take it as like a hashtag I don't know what the hashtag would be Julia Child challenge for like the next two years I think I don't know if I do like one video uh, oh my god, I can't add a video a week, I don't know. I don't know if I somehow figured out how to do it, like, what, once a month or twice a month or something like that, and then we can, like, learn together. Potage parmentier, leek, leek or onion and potato soup. Fishy soise is cold leek and potato soup, I know that one. Cream of watercress soup, so, like, there would be a, a couple weeks where it's just, like, all soup. Cream of spinach soup. But I mean, like, I'd probably be eating better, too, because it'd be, like, so good. And then, like, one day we'd be making, like, ooh, pastry turnovers with Roquefort cheese. Roquefort? Is that how you pronounce it? The next one, we're almost done. If you guys are still here, like, you deserve a reward. Um, is Nigel the Kitchen. So this is, like, I think this is my favorite cookbook. Um, the reason why, like, how I got into Nigella Lawson was that I flew back to Vancouver from Australia when I was visiting my Australian boyfriend like years ago and um, I I so didn't want to come home like I missed him so much and I'm like the most stubborn person in the world and somehow I thought that my stubbornness could beat out like the time difference or something and I'm like I'm not gonna go back to Canadian time zones like this is so stupid I was stupid honestly and so I didn't like try to shift, I fought it. Stupid, stupid, but I fought it. And so my days, this was like on like summer vacation from school, so I didn't have anything to do really. I stayed up one night till 6 a.m. watching Nigella Kitchen on YouTube, because all of her videos were on YouTube, and then fell asleep, I think woke up at two in the afternoon, happened again and again and again, and like every night I would stay up all night watching Nigella Kitchen. So I've seen every video that there is from Nidella Kitchen and I love them all <laughs> and um, I love her recipes oh my god so yeah ooh fish stew look at how pretty that looks whole grain mustard and ginger cocktail sausages that would be good oh she's like putting them in a bread bowl oh my gosh like how amazing does that look so last cookbook on like my bottom shelf and then I just have like a couple more to show you guys so this is called the Flavor Bible, and I bought this. Oh, my leg's falling asleep again. 
Um, so I bought this because I thought it would be really, really handy. I'm not too good at pairing flavors, and um, I'm getting better now. Like, the more you cook, the better you get at all this kind of stuff. But um, it's really handy if I'm, like, trying to come up with, like, an interesting combination of, like, ingredients or, like, flavors or stuff like that. What you do in here is, like, you look up a food. So, okay. Nothing interesting. Okay. Um, okay, so caviar. So it says the season, which is winter, taste is salty, weight is very light, and volume is quite loud. Don't know what they mean by volume, but let's keep going. Um, and then it lists all the different ingredients or kind of foods that taste good with it. So, blini, bread, especially toast points, I don't know, chives, creme fraiche, eggs, French cuisine, lemon, onion, especially raw onion, pepper, black or white, potatoes, Russian cuisine, salt, shallots, sour cream, vodka, white chocolate, wine or champagne, dried fruit, apple juice, chocolate, cinnamon, ginger, lemon, nuts, pistachios, vanilla, and walnuts. Ooh, tips. If the fruit is hard, steam before using. I've never steamed dried fruit, but that's interesting. Okay, so either way, you get the gist. If you want to learn how to like, kind of like maybe tweak some recipes, this is an awesome book. All right, so next is Laura in the Kitchen. I love Laura Vitale. I am so like happy for her um, with like, all of her successes. I think it's amazing and I really hope to like follow in her footsteps one day. Um, I made her spaghetti carbonara in here and I also I pay for like this signature because I'm obsessive. No, <laughs> I'm a fan. Um, and I don't know if the recipe's in here but I made I make her short ribs, her braised short ribs all the time when I'm trying to like impress somebody and it's a fabulous recipe. Definitely recommend trying it out. I'll link it below. It's so good. Um, and if you guys actually follow me on Instagram, that was the recipe I made a while ago. Um, citrus meringue pie. Cheesy garlic bread. Oh my god, that looks so good. Creamy buttery noodles. Crispy Old Bay fries. Cauliflower stufato. I don't know what that is. Herbe de Provence roasted chicken. Nana stuffed, stuffed peppers. Beef and pastina soup. Manchi. I love her. You guys always comment being like, we see Manchi's cookbook in the background. And I like, I love that you guys notice. Um, so I love her videos. I've made her, oh, I forget the recipe. I forget the name. Um, it is, it's basically fried chicken. I'll link the recipe below. So good. And um, again, so this recipe, this cookbook and the Korean kitchen cookbook, these are like my two go-to Korean cookbooks, um, although right now I'm like referring Monk to just because like I want to support her and she's awesome. And it's like, look how bright pink it is, like how gorgeous is this cookbook. Um, and she, it just has everything. Like, I don't think I've made anything actually from the book. I've made some of her recipes but not from the book. Oh my god. And I love that it has the Korean name. Um, that's how I was like introduced to Korean culture, like with the Korean name. So. It's easier sometimes for me to read the Korean name. So sundubu jjigae is spicy soft tofu stew. I have this like all the time when I eat out at Korean restaurants. It's so good. I really want to try it actually. I think that would be really fun. Um, spicy stir fried squid. Mung bean pancakes. Korean style zucchini pancakes. Oh my god, those look so good. Pollock pancakes. Snacks. Actually, is there like the bookie in here? I'm sure, right? Hand torn noodle soup, interesting. So the last cookbook I have, it's kind of weird. I bought it as a joke because I think it's funny. Um, so I haven't made anything from it yet. My mom actually has a cookbook her friends gave it to her as a joke. She's gonna hate that I just said that in my video. But um, 50 chicken recipes bound to be delicious. I actually haven't read the book, but I watched the movies. I'm not a huge fan of the movies. I'm um, a plain vanilla chicken. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. The names. Okay. Um, hot rubbed hen. Totally fried chicken. Basted bird. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> If this is your like kind of humor, oh my god, pick it up. <laughs> so funny. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you like this recipe. 
if you saw any cookbooks that you would like um, to pick up or like look into a little bit more, I'm going to have everything linked in the description box below, so definitely go check it out. And... Hello, little puppy bear. Oh, the puppy is in the shot because he always wants to be involved when we are filming. Yes! Look at you. He like knows when I'm filming and is like, Mommy, I need to be involved. I need to be involved. Yes. Anyways, I love you guys so much. And next Tuesday, we are starting all of our Halloween recipes. So um, the first one is... There are some really, really cool cocktails. I'm so excited. Like, I love the recipe. So stay tuned for Tuesday. And yeah, I will see you guys then. Bye. Can you say goodbye? Even though this isn't about you. This video is not about you, but like you think it is anyways. What are you chewing on? Your hair.